Azerbaijan is riding the crest of an oil boom, but not everyone is happy. Some citizens say that developers are bulldozing their human rights, quite literally. But a group of women activists are determined to protect those at risk. Boomtown. This is Baku, Azerbaijan's capital on the Caspian Sea. Vast oil reserves are fueling massive construction and a drastic reduction in poverty. Good news for some, but for others it's brought terror right into the home. Don't do it! I'm standing here! Scum! Don't do it! Stop! This is eviction Baku style. Police officers and city workers surround a building and smash their way into an apartment owned by Nuria Khalikova. She captures what happens on her small camera. I will put you in prison or I will throw myself out of the window. Stop! But it's no use. Within minutes, the men have forced their way in. Feeling ill, Nuria lies on a couch but continues to film. Who are you and why are you here, wandering in my apartment? No one answers Nuria's questions. This is a scene that is being repeated right across Azerbaijan. On one side, developers with the power of new money and in many cases the authorities behind them are sweeping away old and often unsanitary housing. On the other, many communities argue that they're being forced out of their homes without regard to the law. On the day of her eviction, Nuria, a librarian who lives on her own, is removed and held at a police station for nine hours before being allowed to return to her building. She starts filming again as her neighbor discovers the stairs to her apartment have been destroyed. We have a huge problem in Azerbaijan related to the property rights. Rena Safalieva works for Transparency International, a group that promotes the rule of law and monitors corruption worldwide. It suffices just to look out of the window and to see how Baku is booming. We have a construction boom and we had and still have lots of old houses without proper sanitation, which have to be demolished. So I am not against this tendency as such, but the way the issue is handled leaves much more to be desired. For Nuria, the issue came to a head when the city authorities decided to create a new park in the center of Baku and her former home lay right in its path. The authorities say they offered residents generous financial compensation and spacious apartments to move into. But Nuria and several hundred residents refused the offer, complaining compensation was way below market rates and that alternative apartments were in terrible condition or too far away. In Nuria's case, for about a year, she lived in a state of suspense and fear. This is not a good way to proceed. We made repeated requests to city officials to comment on Nuria's situation without success. In the meantime, her film drew the attention of activists who quickly picked up on her case. They argue that women like her need greater power to defend their rights and increased representation in government. Currently, only 11% of members of parliament are women. Nuria herself had challenged her impending eviction in court, but to no avail, as she explains to Rena Safrileva. The authority, she says, didn't wait for a legal decision. They simply began tearing her building down, starting with the roof. They evicted you without a court ruling? Yes, without a court decision, just by breaking in. Today, Nuria returns to the site of her former home. This is all that remains.
I feel bitterness. I want to cry. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I always loved my country, and I love it now. But you can't treat people like this. Nuria spots an ex-neighbor. For a long time, we were afraid of everything. We were scared and we were crying. We are still trembling. These residents' homes are next in line for demolition. Some residents are planning to respond to their eviction by taking the case to the European Court of Human Rights, which has been available to Azeri citizens since 2002. And in the longer term, Transparency International's Rena Safraleva and a group of female activists led by this campaigner are pushing for further human rights reforms to protect people like Nuria. Together they have created a woman's parliament. No matter how many difficulties and problems we might have at the moment, I believe in the future of Azerbaijan because I believe in the people of Azerbaijan. Shokla Ismail is the founder of Azerbaijan's Women's Parliament. It's an initiative which is being nurtured and monitored by the United Nations Democracy Fund. The goal is to empower women by giving them a greater say over their own lives. To achieve this, they are aiming to increase women's meagre representation in government. A lot of people believe that this sort of democracy and, you know, development will come from abroad, especially from the West. And this is not the feeling which I share. Support should be there. Without support, we will not manage. But after all, this is a people of any country which should make difference. In addition to taking on cases like the evictions in Baku, the activists plan to ensure that better health services are provided for women, like this maternity school that Shokla has set up. Nobody is going to make the revolution for us. It might take a year, it might take 10 years, but anyway, this is something which should come from us, and this is in our hands. But in the immediate future, Nuria discovers that for some women, things seem to be going from bad to worse. As we continue walking with her through her old district, we come across workmen demolishing yet another house. Look, they recognize me. They say hello to me. These are the marauders that were at work in my neighborhood. They are now asking how I'm getting on. How would you think I'm getting on? Then a woman in the next entrance beckons us to come inside. She leads us to a doorway on the landing. This room right next to her own apartment was occupied by a neighbor who moved out. The building is literally being torn down around her. The woman and 35 families have lodged an appeal against the demolitions and she says she's determined to stay put until the court decision. This despite the fact that the workmen, she says, have threatened her. They said we would be buried under the bulldozers. That's when they started to bulldoze us. We should be quick to get out of here, one by one. In the same block, even as these demolitions go ahead, a woman's crisis center is still operating to provide counseling for the local residents. A year living in fear has left its mark on Nuria. You can't imagine what kind of psychological trauma this is. I can't even explain how I survived it. If only it was possible to remove that part of my brain. A few weeks after we filmed this, in another blow to Nuria, the women's crisis center was itself demolished, seemingly leaving her with little help and no hope. But not everyone thinks her efforts have been in vain. Her courage will help other people. With the help of civil society, we should uh, raise awareness of the government that these things are not to be tolerated and the government should design clear procedures for, to handle situations like that. And she sees encouraging signs that the government is responding. Earlier this year, Azerbaijan's president, Ilham Aliyev, announced reforms and pledged a new drive against injustice and corruption. What's more, Nuria's film, with the support from activists, has helped draw international attention to the situation in Baku. 
After the destruction of the Women's Crisis Center, the spokesperson for the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights called on the Azerbaijani authorities to investigate the forced evictions and, if necessary, to provide adequate compensation and restitution. Nuria herself has now found an apartment to live in. After borrowing heavily, she was able to buy one in the city. A survivor, she is now intent on moving on with her life. I want to live in peace, to have a normal life. I don't want to worry about the roof being demolished over my head. I just want to live in peace.